Let's add a custom advanced item to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found us back in Taylor once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom advanced item to Minecraft. So what is an advanced item is probably the first question that you might ask yourself. Well, Previously, what we have seen is we have seen the two items over here, bismuth and raw bismuth, and they are normal items with no added functionality or no special properties. However, that is what we're going to do. We're going to make a custom item class. So basically, an advanced item is what I call an item that has a custom item class where we can basically add all sorts of crazy functionality to it. So let's take a look in our item package. We're going to right click new package. I'm going to call this custom. This is just for organizing purposes. And then inside of the custom package, we're going to right click new Java class. And we're going to call this the chisel item in this case. Now the convention is to name this particular class, whatever you basically are making, right? So this would be chisel and then always, always add an item here as a suffix that is a good idea as a convention so you know, oh, this is an item. This will extend from the item class here from net Minecraft world item. Very important that we choose the right one. We hover over this create constructor matching super. And in theory, we could already use this particular class. However, it doesn't have any specific functionality just yet. However, what we can do is we can take a look at some stuff. If you just start typing in override, you can actually see every single method that you can override over here for an item and some of them get to basically change certain, you know, properties. Some of them have some functionality. Some of them get called when certain things happen. So this is a really freaking cool, right? So I highly recommend to take a look at those. You can also go into the item class itself by control, left clicking on this and see, well, most of the methods, as you can see, it's a very, very long class. And you also can go to the item, item extension, actually, I item extension is the one that is the one from NeoForge over here that also adds some additional extension as well. It's really freaking cool. And one last thing you can take a look at is if you click on item and press control H, now you get the entire class hierarchy and you can take a look at every single vanilla item class that exists. So if you're like, how does an instrument work? Take a look at it, right? How does a, an egg item work? How does, a, how does a brush work? You can take a look at every single one of them. All of the code is available to you. And that is one of the best things that you can basically take a look at that is going to serve you so well, because then you're going to be like, oh, I actually kind of want an item that kind of works like this. Just take a look at that. And then from there, you are basically golden. Now, in our case, the chisel item is going to be used for the following. We're going to be able to right click certain blocks and they will then turn into other blocks. That's literally all I want to do, basically like a chisel. So let's say we right click stone, it should turn into stone bricks. And we do that by you overriding the use on method over here. This one right here, that is the method that basically is going to be called every time we right click when we have a chisel item inside of our hand. Now for this, we need a couple of things. The first thing we need is a level. Very importantly, we choose net Minecraft world level right here and then hit tab to autocomplete this. That is immediately going to import the correct level class. That's going to be equal. That's going to be called level equal to context dot get level. So we're going to get the level from the use on context. There's quite a few things in the use on context that we're going to use. The first thing is the level. And the second thing that we need is actually a block. So we want to know what block did we just click, right? We're going to call this variable, the clicked block here equal to level dot get block state. And then we need to pass in a particular position. Luckily, the context has the position that we just clicked called get click pause. And then from this block state, we're going to get the actual block right here. There we go end it with a semicolon and we now have access to the clicked block. And now the question is, well, now we want an if statement and we somehow want to say, well, if this, if, if this click block is, well, you know, one of the blocks that we want to be able to transform, then we proceed and actually transform it. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to do this with a map. So we're going to make a private static final map or from Java util over here. And this is going to map from a block to another block. And this is going to be the chisel underscore map equal to a map dot of. And then let's take a look at what we can see. So we're going to add basically always a pair over here. So the pairing is always like mapping from something to another thing. So here we're going to map from blocks dot stone 
two blocks that stone bricks exactly we might also be able to do end stone and then map that to end stone bricks i think that that's fair we can also maybe do i don't even know deep slate yeah absolutely why not and then we're going to do deep slate bricks and we can also do crazy combinations right so we can say how about we take a gold block and we turn that into an iron block for example and yes in theory what you can do you should also be able to do you know iron block and then we turn that into let's say stone let's do a blocks stone over here no a stone actually there you go and you also can do it as you can see you can do as many as you want obviously but then you can also do let's say netherrack turns into mod blocks dot let's say the bismuth block and here of course as always when you are calling something where that is your own thing you need to do the dot get because if you hover over this you can see this is a deferred block while this is a normal block Keep that in mind that you need to call the dot get over here. That is quite important. But yeah, there you go. Those are some examples. And now what we can say is the first blocks over here, those are always the keys. So we can literally just say, hey, if the chisel map that contains key of the clicked block that we've literally just clicked, then we're good to go. We know we've just clicked a block that we can transform into something. And then we want to do so. Now to transform it, we need to be on the server. How to do this? Well, if level dot is client side and this is extremely important pay close attention exclamation mark in the front why is this the case well we're asking if the level is either on the client or the server if we don't have the exclamation mark then inside of this if statement we would only be on the client right so only on client right so that is not what we want because the client really is only responsible for how to display things and similar things like that however we actually want to be only on server because the server determines, I mean, basically anything. The server determines damage. The server determines your movement. The server determines when things change, like blocks, right? And that is quite important. That is when we need to be on the server. Therefore, the negation with the exclamation mark. Extremely important. And then we can say level that set block and update. Actually, we want to call the end update method exactly. We can then say this is going to be our context that get click pause and then to what block state do we want to change this well it's just going to be chisel map that get this is going to get us a block right we're going to pass in the click block over here and then get the default block state from it so basically we're going to get if let's say we just right click a gold block then this here is going to return us the iron block and then it's going to make a B default block state out of it. Pretty freaking cool. Now, we also want to take the chisel and actually damage it, right? That makes a lot of sense. We wouldn't be, want to be able to use this like a thousand or like unlimited amount of times. That would be a little bit broken. But if we then say context.get item in hand, this is going to get us the item stack that we're actually holding inside of a hand, like the stack in the hand that we've just right click with. And we're going to hurt and break this by a damage of one. We're then going to say, say level.cast and then tap to autocomplete this to cast this into a server world. Now, the reason why we're able to do this is because we know that inside of this if statement, we have to be on the server because this is basically, if this if statement is true, then we have to be on the server. Therefore, we can cast it without even worrying about it. We then pass in context.getPlayer. We can then say item over here, and that's going to be a consumer. And then we're going to say context.getPlayer. On equipped item broken, passing in the item consumer over here, and then equipment slot of a main hand. And that is going to damage the item. It looks a little bit crazy, but overall, this is going to damage the proper item, right? The, the item that we have in our inventory, the stack, and that is going to be great. The last thing I also want to do is get a little bit more feedback to the player, and that is going to be by doing the play sound over here. So level that plays sound, passing in a null over here. Then context.get click position or get click pause, sound events dot, and we're going to use grindstone use exactly. And the sound source here is going to be the sound source of blocks in this case. And that is also going to play this. Lastly, in the return, we want to return an interaction result of success in this case. So that way we know that, hey, we were successful in right clicking and we also get a sweet little right clicking animation for with our item basically. Now, overall, the code over here shouldn't be too complicated. This is, I mean, dare I say, very basic code, all things considered. It really is not too crazy. The hurt and break method looks a little bit crazy, but really it is also not that complicated if you break it down into each individual component. Whatever the case may be, though, of course, this class is also available to you in down below, right? So no worries there at all. But then we can actually proceed and properly register our custom item, right? The advanced item right here. And we know that we haven't used this if the 
constructor right here is grayed out. That means we haven't used this. So now we can go into our mod items class and say public, static, and a final. And this is going to be a deferred item. We're going to make this once again of type item here. And this is going to be our chisel equal to items start register. The name here is going to be chisel. And then we're going to make a supplier of a new, very important chisel item. It's extremely important that we choose a new chisel item with new item properties. And on those properties, we also want to call the durability method over here. Let's say 32 max damage to give it as a durability. I think that that is fair. Now we have our custom advanced item registered. Let's add it to the creative mode tab here as well. That's going to be the chisel right here. There we go. We can then also add the translation and the item model. Now, of course, also have the texture available basically immediately. So this is going to be the translation. Then the chisel over here, we're just going to take the bismuth and change this up for the item model JSON file. And then the texture. Well, that is going to be pretty nice indeed. And that is, of course, also available to you down below for download. And with that, we have everything we need. We have the proper item added. We have used the item right here, the constructor, and we have the item class done with the use on method. So let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, friends, we're back in Minecraft and let's take a look. The chisel here has been added. If I right click, you can see I can change the blocks to something else. That is pretty freaking cool. And you can basically see I can even circle, like cycle through this. That is absolutely amazing. I mean, come on. Isn't that just freaking awesome? Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, look at all. Oh, and then it broke. There you go. That is a custom advanced item added to Minecraft. Pretty freaking cool. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom advanced blocks. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.